for constructing a frequency distribution. First select the number of classes, usually between 5 and 20. Calculate the class width. Class width is approximately the maximum data value minus the minimum data value divided by the number of desired classes. Then round this result to get the convenient number for the class width. It's usually best to round up. Choose the value for the first lower class limit by e using either the minimum value or a convenient value below the minimum. Using the first lower class limit and class width, list the other lower class limits. List the lower class limits in a vertical column and then determine and enter the upper class limits. Take each individual data value and put a tally mark in the appropriate class. Add the tally marks to get the frequency. Here's an example. Using the McDonald's lunch service times in the first table, follow the procedure shown on the next slide to construct a frequency distribution. Use five classes. First, we select five as the number of desired classes. Calculate the class width as shown below. Note that we round 45 up to 50, which is a more convenient number. So we took the maximum data value in the table and the minimum data value in the table and divided by five. So if we look at this data set again, it's in order from smallest to biggest. It, data sets typically won't be in order when you collect the data. So you'll have to go through some kind of a sorting um, process. But I've sorted the data for you to indicate the lowest easy to find and the highest easy to find data values. Now, once you do this division, you'll notice that the, the sum or the uh, quotient is 45. And to round up to a more convenient number to use, we choose 50 as our class width. The minimum data value is 83, which is not a very convenient starting number, so we go to a data value below 83 and select a more convenient value of 75 as the first lower class limit. Add the class width of 50 to the starting value of 75 to get the second lower class limit of 125. Continue to add the class width of 50 until we have five lower class limits. The lower class limits will then be 75, 125, 175, 225, and 275 as illustrated in this table. 75, these are just the lower class limits, 125, 175, 225, 275. From this list, you can identify the upper class limits. So the number that this class ends before this class begins would be 124. And the number that this class ends before this one begins would be 174 and so on. So th these numbers are the upper class limits for each of the classes that we are constructing. Remember, we're, we're constructing five of them. So here is where you'll see the time in seconds for each of the classes, lower and upper class limits in place now. And then the counts have already been done. So we would look in the table for all the data points that occurred between 75 and 124 inclusive. The frequency here indicates that it's 11. So let's go back to the table of values and see that there are indeed 11 um, recorded times between 75 and 124 seconds. So if I count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, there are indeed 11 times that are between 75 and 124 inclusive. So that's where the counts come in. Uh, the other frequencies will be found in a similar manner for each of the classes in this particular example. So let's try an example from scratch. So here we have a data set. Again, the data is in order from smallest to biggest. These are the ages of uh, recent award-winning male actors. The following data shows the ages of these actors at the time they won their award. We want to construct a frequency distribution table for the data. We, we're actually given the instructions of beginning with a lower class limit of 20 and use a class width of 10. Don't have specific directions on the number of classes that we need, but I think we could 
probably interpret that based on the data elements that we need to include in the data set. So I'm going to go ahead and, and draw my uh, table for my frequency distribution. And here, this is going to be ages of actors, right? And this would be the number of actors or the frequency of occurrence in any one group of ages. The first lower class limit is 20. Uh, the class width is 10, so that means the next lower class li limit would be 30, and so on, 40, 50, 60, 70. And we'll come back and make sure we have enough. Let's go ahead and fill in the upper class limits. The whole number less than 30 that would end the first class would be 29. And then remember our class width, we add to each one of these upper class limits to get the next upper class limit. And remember our data as well is in numerical order. Our highest value is 77. So I don't need any more classes um, because 77 would fit in this particular class. Then I'm going to count the number of ages of actors between 20 and 29, and that would be one between, and of course that's inclusive, between 30 and 39 inclusive would be uh, this group, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and then between 40 and 49 would be this group, so three, six, nine, 12, 13, between 50 and 59, that would be this group, so there are five. Between 60 and 69, there are two. And 70 and 79, there are two. Now what I typically do is just make sure that my count agrees with the number of data elements. So I'm going to sum this column to just, again, to make sure that I've, that I've counted all of my data elements. It's much easier to do when the data elements are in order. Um, add 13, add 5, add 2, add 2. So I get 36 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That's 34. Let me do my count again. 1 and 11, 13, 5, 2, and 2 is 34. And that verifies that I have the right number of elements in my table.